if you are in that age bracket between 40 and 28 or even 50 and 28 you would know that one of September Bach was a classic in the black community. Let's check it out. Why 106 and Park ended for good. For Hype Plus, I'm Tatiana LaJoy. In the late 1990s, music video shows were quintessential to entertainment culture. Rap City The Basement, TRL, and Access Granted are shows that give us that nostalgic feeling of coming home from school to catch the latest music videos. These programs were popular because back then, in order to catch a music video on your own, you most likely had to get it from Facts. a legal site that could take 30 minutes to download. If you know about LimeWire, let me know in the comments below. I can remember downloading so many songs from LimeWire and getting so many virus from LimeWire. You have to be between that age to know what LimeWire is. I can remember downloading Soldier Boy, 50 cent music anything that was popular around the time mainly soldier boy music was popular around the time though download so these shows were the best way to not only see the latest and hottest music videos but also exclusive interviews and performances trl was a pioneer for this type of programming and became one of the most popular shows on mtv and inspired many other networks to try the concept Former president of music programming and specials at BET, Stephen G. Hill, saw the potential of the network having their own version of TRL and pitched it to BET network executives. They loved the idea and decided to give it a shot, which birthed 106 in Park. Many people's first impression was that 106 would be just a bootleg TRL until hosts Free and AJ proved them wrong with a record 613,000 viewership rating for the network. Teens across the country would rush home to watch 106 in Park because AJ and Free were fun, entertaining, and they never knew what exciting performances or interviews they could miss from the hottest artists and entertainers in the game. The show was successful for a long time, but went through many changes throughout its 14-year run. When 106 in Park ended, it marked the end of an era. As the culture shifted and social media platforms like YouTube were introduced, 106 in Park didn't have the allure that it used to since music videos became more accessible. This, among other reasons, contributed to the end of our beloved 106 in Park. Here's why 106 in Park ended. The first episode of 106 in Park aired on September 11, 2000, just one year before the 9-11 attack in New York City with hosts AJ Calloway and Marie Free Wright. Free met Stephen G. Hill when she was a 16-year-old intern in NYC, and he knew back then that her tenacity and passion would make her successful one day. Years later, Free became well-known in the entertainment industry as a dancer and had her big break when she was featured in Marky Mark's music video for his hit song, Good Vibrations. When she auditioned for 106 in Park, Steven knew that she was a perfect fit. AJ was a big party promoter in NYC and he threw the hottest parties through his entertainment company called Black Diamonds. Steven originally was working with AJ to help him find a host for the show since AJ was so well connected. They look so cute together though. Wow, look at them. Black accent. Instead, Stephen began to observe how charismatic AJ was and requested that he send in an audition tape. After a successful chemistry test with Free, it was clear that Free and AJ were the final piece that would launch the highest rated show for the BET network. 106 in Park was an hour long in the beginning, but due to its success, expanded into a 90 minute program a year later. Thanks to Free and AJ, 106 in Park gained popularity because they were idolized as the cool kids. They were fun, attractive, and entertaining. AJ and Free brought so many memorable moments like when Free kissed Eminem, Aaliyah's last interview four days before her wow. accident, and surprise guest appearances such as Whitney Houston. People loved tuning in for Wild Out Wednesdays where contestants would compete in a dance-off, and Freestyle Fridays where two aspiring rappers would compete in a freestyle battle without using profanity or sexually explicit language since the show had a teen demographic. When Steven created 106 in Park, he intended it to be a place where black teens can go to see themselves represented live on a daily basis. 106 in Park was formulated the day Roger Troutman from Zap passed away. I remember hearing about it on the radio and that was really the first seed of 106 in Park. How do we react to things that happen? How can we play music immediately? What can we do to make sure that we're timely? Culture was a really important part of what 106 was going to be. Stephen G. Hill. At that time, there was no other show program that captured the attention of young black teens in this way. Back then, there was no YouTube, so shows. 
And the thing about that, they show with Usher. Usher still looks the same. Damn, that, that dude don't age. Like 106 was the opportunity for people to see music videos and also performances and interviews of the hottest artists. It was the building block of the culture. It was the cornerstone of the culture. It was the place everyone came to find out what was happening in the world of pop. If you, if you remember, um, I think it was Rhapsody with Tika. That was live. Rhapsody, nothing could have touched that. That was awesome. They should bring that back. The culture. Making it to 106 in Park as an artist was a mama I made it moment. Chris Brown, Destiny's Child, Early Riri, icons of the music today all began as new artists on 106 in Park. Big Tigger. 106 not only shined a light on artists that have made it, but also discovered rappers such as Jin from performing in Freestyle Fridays. They also brought on white entertainers as well because they were still people that influenced the black youth. People such as NSYNC, Tom Cruise, and Madonna. Free and AJ were adored by fans, but there was some controversy towards the end of their time as hosts. In 2004, Wendy Williams reported on her radio show that allegedly Free was rumored to be having an affair with Jay-Z and to be pregnant with his baby. A fan called into her show and allegedly- <sighs> So it's gotta be Wendy Williams, say. She always have to say something out the way. I don't know. Lee said they saw Jay-Z visiting the hospital when Free gave birth and that they had a baby boy. My sister gave birth on the same day that we gave birth to her. Oh, 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 after this scandal, things weren't the same, and Free was constantly absent from the show in 2005. On July 28, 2005, AJ announced his last episode without warning. He called Free on his phone, and on speakerphone, they both gave their final goodbye. Since Free left, she has kept a low profile and lives a very private life. Free lost her mother to breast cancer in 2010, and she now advocates for breast cancer awareness through her foundation called Teen Cancer Free. Free was and will always be the most beloved host on BET right alongside AJ. It was so important as a young Latina and just as a young woman, seeing a woman like Free being on TV who didn't have this cookie cutter image. For Free to be so fly and to bring this flavor to her wardrobe and hair and having that freedom of expression was groundbreaking. Jalissa. AJ had a lot of success after he left 106. He became a host for the entertainment news show Extra from 2005 to 2019. However, despite the fact that he was on 106 in Park for five years and on Extra for 13 years, people still refer to him as AJ from 106 in Park. In the 2020 Hip Hop Awards, they paid tribute to the legacy of 106 in Park and Steven addressed the rumors over the years that Free and AJ were fired. He said that both of them chose to leave when they chose to leave. After AJ made his final appearance on the show, Jalissa and Big Tigger were quick replacements to appear that following Monday. They were good picks for the time being because Jalissa was already on a show called The Roof and Big Tigger is an OG from being a host on The Basement. They served as temporary hosts as BET continued to search for a female co-host for Terrence J. They found Roxy in a Chicago talent search where she beat out thousands of women that auditioned. On July 6, 2006, Terrence and Roxy came onto 106 in Park as the new hosts, and fans weren't particularly welcoming. Many people bullied Roxy and Terrence online, and the ratings weren't as consistently high as they were when Free and AJ were hosting. Throughout the years, they also endured some scandals. One episode, Roxy and Terrence got into an argument on air where Terrence was clearly upset with Roxy and kept making rude comments towards her until she walked off set, wow. and she was absent from the show for a few days. This incident sparked rumors of Roxy and Terrence dating, and Little Webby had beef with Terrence, making several public comments threatening him. People don't know why Little Webby had an issue with Terrence, but there were assumptions that it was because of the incident when Roxy walked off set. However, Roxy did speak out about sexual harassment when Little Webby allegedly whispered inappropriate sexual comments in her ear and was ushered off set. Terrence checked him for the incident, and they've had beef ever since. 
In the last episode of 106, Roxy and Terrence made a guest appearance and revealed that the incident where Roxy walked off stage was fake and that the network staged it so Roxy could have a couple days off since the host hadn't taken any days off in years. What do you guys think? Is this just a cover up or was the fight really staged? Roxy then became one of 50 Cent's victims when she called his music whack. 50 then went public and accused <laughs> her of sleeping her- Never say anything about 50 because he is the king of petty. Do not do that. 50 Cent is known to end careers. Well, he didn't technically end the Roxy career because she still ended up doing what she had to do. But that is a risk that you're not willing to take. Way to the top and called her a pop. Lisa Ray McCoy also publicly accused Roxy of sleeping with her husband, Michael Missick, the former premier of Turks and Caicos. On May 29, 2012, Roxy and Terrence announced that they would be leaving 106 in Park and would host a talent search called The Search to find their replacements. They requested video auditions and picked their top seven choices, which they narrowed down to four final hosts, Bow Wow, Shorty the Prince, Pageon, and Miss Mickey. Bow Wow didn't audition because in the past, he and Aaliyah were crowned Mr. and Mrs. 106 in Park because they had the most votes to have their videos played. On January 23rd, 2012, 106 in Park revealed a new location, set, and segments such as Battle of the Sexes and Girl Chat. The ratings suffered with these four hosts and all except for Bow Wow were eventually fired. They then had Angela Simmons as a temporary host until they brought on their final host, Canadian singer Keisha Shante. Keisha began hosting on October 1st, 2013, and during her time made history by interviewing the former First Lady Michelle Obama. In December 2014, she received a star on the Brampton Hall of Fame, hosted the BET Awards from 2014 to 2016, and interviewed huge talents such as Mariah Carey, Sylvester Stallone, and Denzel Washington. In 2015, Keisha was allegedly having issues with her visa and was absent from the show a lot before she made her final departure. BET then had a time where they had a different guest celebrity co-host every episode with Bow Wow. Karuchi guest hosted for a short period and faced backlash over an episode where she made fun of Beyonce's daughter, Blue Ivy. Here are the top six things Blue Ivy thought about the VMAs with number six. I really did wake up like this because my parents never called me. Bro. Oh, I can't. Karuchi apologized by explaining that she was reading off a teleprompter and it was her first time on live television. Stephen G. Hill and Bow Wow also made public statements to defend Karuchi, but the beehive was relentless. Shortly after this incident, 106 and Park went into hiatus, and a month later, BET announced that 106 and Park was canceled. A lot of people blamed Beyonce for the end of 106 and Park, claiming that she influenced BET to shut 106 down, kind of like what Tyler Perry tried to do to the Boondocks. But it's also safe to speculate that the dwindling ratings were also due to the constant changing of hosts. Many fans say to this day that Free yep. and AJ were the real 106 in Park. Ever since they left, things were never the same. I think music video countdown shows should come back. Music isn't Locked being promoted day. the same way that it used to be. I think those shows could help keep us in the know of who's who and what's new in music, etc. YouTube user Brandy Moore. Another user, David Richardson, said, 106 with AJ and Free hosting, those were the days. That show got super kitty once they left and it just wasn't the same. BET at that time was popping. In a 2017 Breakfast Club interview, AJ said he would do a music video show again and has joked about Ooh. himself and Free returning to 106 and Park for a reboot. 106 was also rumored to return to a digital platform, but it never happened either. Regardless of whether or not 106 in Park comes back, it was and always will be a legendary show and arguably the best thing to happen to BET. YouTube user Joelle's Van DV said, these youngers will never understand how addicting 106 in Park was. Every afternoon after school and then Freestyle Fridays gave me life, especially when you're screaming <laughs> at the TV, who's winning, LOL. We second this opinion, as everyone here at Comedy Hype agrees that you can't reminisce on the good times of growing up in the early 2000s without thinking about the glory days of 106 and Park, a staple for our community and culture. Stay up to date with the latest news in comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Follow Comedy Hype across all social media and look out- That is so true. 106 and Park and BET back in the day was off the chain. I cannot lie because I can remember so many good memories about 106 and Bach. Even even with the new host and co-host, 
I still had a few episodes that they they did did well. They did okay, but it never was the same back in the day though. But let me know what's your favorite moment that you enjoyed of, of 106 and Park because that will always be a legendary show in the black community. I am glad that they, they made a, a video on, on this because a lot of young people wouldn't really know, wouldn't really understand how popular 106 and Park was and how vital it was in the black community. I will not stop, I want the guap, I'm gonna keep rising until I get high. I like the sun, I fall from dawn, cause I've been told y'all niggas I'm the one.